Practice Test 3 Listening, Part 1 You will hear some short conversations. You will hear each conversation twice. Choose the correct answer to complete each conversation. Conversation 1 Are you looking for somewhere? Yes, I am. Where's the post office? It's over there, opposite the one-stop shop. Conversation 1 Are you looking for somewhere? Yes, I am. Where's the post office? It's over there, opposite the one-stop shop. Conversation 2 Have you finished that report for head office? No, I haven't. I've been answering the phone all morning. Will you be able to get it done by tomorrow? Conversation 2 Have you finished that report for head office? No, I haven't. I've been answering the phone all morning. Will you be able to get it done by tomorrow? Conversation 3 Are you feeling okay, Jenny? You don't look well at all. I've got a terrible headache. I think I might be getting flu. Why don't you take the rest of the day off then? Conversation 3 Are you feeling okay, Jenny? You don't look well at all. I've got a terrible headache. I think I might be getting flu. Why don't you take the rest of the day off then? Conversation 4 Good afternoon. How can I help? Is it still possible to get tickets for tonight's performance? We've got a few of the more expensive seats. Conversation 4 Good afternoon. How can I help? Is it still possible to get tickets for tonight's performance? We've got a few of the more expensive seats. Conversation 5 What are you planning on doing after you graduate? I'd like to stay on and do a master's degree, if they'll have me. That won't be a problem then, given your grades so far. Conversation 5 what are you planning on doing after you graduate? I'd like to stay on and do a master's degree, if they'll have me. That won't be a problem then, given your grades so far. Conversation 6 I'm sorry, Mark, but you'll have to submit this essay again. Oh, right. Is it too short? It's not that. You haven't included a list of references. Conversation 6 I'm sorry, Mark, but you'll have to submit this essay again. Oh, right. Is it too short? It's not that. You haven't included a list of references. Conversation 7 What have you got planned for the weekend? Nothing special, with the weather forecast being as awful as it is. No. It's definitely not the right time of year to organize a barbecue. Conversation 7 What have you got planned for the weekend? Nothing special, with the weather forecast being as awful as it is. No, it's definitely not the right time of year to organize a barbecue. That is the end of part one. Listening, part two. You will hear five conversations. Listen to the conversations and answer the questions. Choose the correct answer. You will hear each conversation twice. Conversation one. 
you hear a female manager talking to a new worker. OK, so you've already got your ID card, which opens up all the emergency exits in this department. Yes, and you told me about leaving the building immediately without taking bags if there's a fire. Right, so let me just tell you about the alarm at 10.30 every Wednesday. Yes, I know about that. It's when you check that everything's working. Yes, it's three short sounds at that time, but if it's a long sound, it's a real warning. Oh, I see. And we all go to the meeting point. Yes, don't use the lifts, of course, but go straight down to the car park at the back of this building. Sorry, we meet in the park? By the coffee shop? No, that's opposite this building. Just wait by the cars. Oh, right. Conversation 1 OK, so you've already got your ID card, which opens up all the emergency exits in this department. Yes. And you told me about leaving the building immediately without taking bags if there's a fire. Right. So let me just tell you about the alarm at 10.30 every Wednesday. Yes, I know about that. It's when you check that everything's working. Yes, it's three short sounds at that time. But if it's a long sound, it's a real warning. Oh, I see. And we all go to the meeting point. Yes, don't use the lifts, of course, but go straight down to the car park at the back of this building. Sorry, we meet in the park? By the coffee shop? No, that's opposite this building. Just wait by the cars. Oh, right. Conversation 2 You hear a male tutor talking to a student called Alison. I just wanted to have a few words with you about your written work, Allison. Okay. Is there a problem with what I'm producing? Well, you must try to hand the next piece in on time, but apart from that, the structure's getting better. In this, your most recent essay, I can follow the points you're making, much more so than in your work from the beginning of the semester. And the graphs showing year-on-year -year changes? They're done well, too. That's good. Just make sure that you always say where you got your information from. Put everything in order at the end of the essay. I thought I did that already. You're fine when you're talking about books, but you must say when you got information from a website. The date, I mean. Oh, right. And I'm pleased you took my advice about switching on the spelling and grammar check. Yes, that's been very helpful. Conversation 2 I just wanted to have a few words with you about your written work, Allison. Okay. Is there a problem with what I'm producing? Well, you must try to hand the next piece in on time, but apart from that, the structure's getting better. In this, your most recent essay, I can follow the points you're making, much more so than in your work from the beginning of the semester. And the graphs showing year-on-year -year changes? They're done well, too. That's good. Just make sure that you always say where you got your information from. Put everything in order at the end of the essay. I thought I did that already? You're fine when you're talking about books, but you must say when you got information from a website. The date, I mean. Oh, right. And I'm pleased you took my advice about switching on the spelling and grammar check. Yes, that's been very helpful. Conversation 3 You hear two friends discussing a job interview. How do you feel about your interview next week? Are you feeling confident? I'm quite nervous actually, because I'd really like to get the job. I've read so much advice about how you should sit and what you should do with your hands and... Most of that's nonsense. Yes, I know. Just remember that you're exactly what they're looking for in terms of your degree. But I've never done the job they're offering in that industry. That doesn't matter nowadays. People move between industries all the time. Look, I've had so many interviews in my time and they all seem to follow the same pattern if you're the right person for the job. They've already been through your CV carefully. That's why they've called you for interview. So the point of the interview isn't to ask you difficult questions, 
but just to check that you have the right personality and good communication skills, which you do have. I hope you're right. Conversation 3 How do you feel about your interview next week? Are you feeling confident? I'm quite nervous, actually, because I'd really like to get the job. I've read so much advice about how you should sit and what you should do with your hands and... Most of that's nonsense. Yes, I know. Just remember that you're exactly what they're looking for in terms of your degree. But I've never done the job they're offering in that industry. That doesn't matter nowadays. People move between industries all the time. Look, I've had so many interviews in my time and they all seem to follow the same pattern if you're the right person for the job. They've already been through your CV carefully. That's why they've called you for interview. So the point of the interview isn't to ask you difficult questions, but just to check that you have the right personality and good communication skills, which you do have. I hope you're right. Conversation 4 You hear a man asking a woman for advice about his visa. My supervisor told me to come and see you, about extending my visa. Oh dear, it's not really my field. My job is to help with things like tax and salaries. Right, I thought you dealt with all employment matters. To do with the company, yes. Okay, thank you. But just to say, I know that we've had quite a lot of people extending their visas in the last year or so. I think it's pretty straightforward. Your visa hasn't run out yet, has it? No, it hasn't. But someone told me to apply a month or so before it ran out. Yes, I've heard that. And I know you don't have to leave the country while you're waiting for a reply. Yes, my friend told me that too. It's good to know. Anyway, sorry I couldn't be of more help. No, no. It's my mistake. You probably need to see a lawyer. There's a good one in the high street. That did cross my mind too. I pass their offices most days. Thanks. Conversation 4 My supervisor told me to come and see you, about extending my visa. Oh dear, it's not really my field. My job is to help with things like tax and salaries. Right, I thought you dealt with all employment matters. To do with the company, yes. Okay, thank you. But just to say... I know that we've had quite a lot of people extending their visas in the last year or so. I think it's pretty straightforward. Your visa hasn't run out yet, has it? No, it hasn't. But someone told me to apply a month or so before it ran out. Yes, I've heard that. And I know you don't have to leave the country while you're waiting for a reply. Yes, my friend told me that too. It's good to know. Anyway, sorry I couldn't be of more help. No, no. It's my mistake. You probably need to see a lawyer. There's a good one in the high street. That did cross my mind too. I pass their offices most days. Thanks. Conversation 5 You hear two students discussing a concept from a lecture. I know what the lecturer said. I made notes, but it still doesn't make any sense to me. What was he saying about ants? He said that behaviour emerges from the individual actions of each ant, like all going to a source of food. So he was suggesting that things just happen to each individual ant, but in some strange way all those things come together and look like intelligent behaviour? No, he distinguished between the individual intelligence of each creature which is very low, and the intelligence of the group, which emerges when they interact. I think I needed a few more examples for me to understand. Are birds flying together to other regions in the winter the same thing? Or the way that groups of fish all move together when a predator appears? He didn't touch on birds and fish, although they seem like good examples. The illustration he used was bees moving together or apart if it gets too cold or too hot in their living space. Did he? I missed that. Conversation 5 I know what the lecturer said. 
I made notes, but it still doesn't make any sense to me. What was he saying about ants? He said that behaviour emerges from the individual actions of each ant, like all going to a source of food. So he was suggesting that things just happen to each individual ant, but in some strange way all those things come together and look like intelligent behaviour. No, he distinguished between the individual intelligence of each creature, which is very low, and the intelligence of the group, which emerges when they interact. I think I needed a few more examples for me to understand. Are birds flying together to other regions in the winter the same thing? Or the way that groups of fish all move together when a predator appears? He didn't touch on birds and fish, although they seem like good examples. The illustration he used was bees moving together or apart if it gets too cold or too hot in their living space. Did he? I missed that. That is the end of part two. Listening, part three. You will hear the general manager of an international hotel talking to a group of new receptionists. Complete the information on the notepad. Write short answers of one to three words. You will hear the person twice. Welcome to the International Hotel. We are delighted to have you on board. We believe that your skills and hard work will be valuable additions to our hotel. As receptionists, your primary responsibility is to create a warm and welcoming atmosphere for our guests. The key point is, in a very real way, you are the hotel, because you are the first and then the main point of contact for guests, both in person and over the phone. Additionally, you'll handle complaints in a professional and polite manner. Remember, they're a marketing opportunity. They're a chance to show a guest who's unhappy about something that we can put right anything which goes wrong. Your work schedule will be based on shifts because we provide 24-7 service at the reception. You'll receive a monthly work timetable and if you have to come late or you're unable to do your scheduled work, you must tell the front office manager, giving them as much advanced warning as possible. Any other work issues, see the HR manager. Now, you've already been advised of your salary, which will be paid into your bank account on the last Friday of each month. In addition to your salary, you'll qualify for various benefits such as health insurance and discounts at our hotel shops. You can check your terms and conditions of service for all the details. Now, moving on to appearance. Looking professional is essential, so you'll be provided with a uniform which you must wear when you're on duty. You can wear jewellery, but not too much and nothing big or bold, and your shoes must be dark. And definitely no trainers, please. You'll follow a detailed training process during your first few weeks when you'll always have an experienced member of staff by your side at reception. This training will cover hotel procedures, customer service and other relevant areas. First, you'll be introduced to the computer reservation system by Simon Hill after this meeting. Simon's also responsible for training staff about disability awareness and he'll give you some basic training in that tomorrow morning before your first shift. Put simply, our goal is to provide exceptional service that leaves a lasting impression on our guests. Always try to go beyond guests' expectations and ensure they have a memorable stay at our hotel. Guest delight, we call it, not just guest satisfaction. Once again, we welcome you to the International Hotel family. Welcome to the International Hotel. We are delighted to have you on board. We believe that your skills and hard work will be valuable additions to our hotel. 
As receptionists, your primary responsibility is to create a warm and welcoming atmosphere for our guests. The key point is, in a very real way, you are the hotel, because you are the first and then the main point of contact for guests, both in person and over the phone. Additionally, you'll handle complaints in a professional and polite manner. Remember, they're a marketing opportunity. They're a chance to show a guest who's unhappy about something that we can put right anything which goes wrong. Your work schedule will be based on shifts because we provide 24-7 service at the reception. You'll receive a monthly work timetable and if you have to come late or you're unable to do your scheduled work, you must tell the front office manager, giving them as much advanced warning as possible. Any other work issues, see the HR manager. Now, you've already been advised of your salary, which will be paid into your bank account on the last Friday of each month. In addition to your salary, you'll qualify for various benefits such as health insurance and discounts at our hotel shops. You can check your terms and conditions of service for all the details. Now, moving on to appearance. Looking professional is essential, so you'll be provided with a uniform which you must wear when you're on duty. You can wear jewellery, but not too much and nothing big or bold, and your shoes must be dark. And definitely no trainers, please. You'll follow a detailed training process during your first few weeks when you'll always have an experienced member of staff by your side at reception. This training will cover hotel procedures, customer service and other relevant areas. First, you'll be introduced to the computer reservation system by Simon Hill after this meeting. Simon's also responsible for training staff about disability awareness and he'll give you some basic training in that tomorrow morning before your first shift. Put simply, our goal is to provide exceptional service that leaves a lasting impression on our guests. Always try to go beyond guests' expectations and ensure they have a memorable stay at our hotel. Guest delight, we call it, not just guest satisfaction. Once again, we welcome you to the International Hotel family. That is the end of part three. Listening, part four. You will hear an interview with Amelia Roberts who is an expert in sales and marketing. You will hear the interview twice. Choose the correct answers. You have one minute to read through the questions below. This week, I'm talking to an expert in sales and marketing, Amelia Roberts. Welcome, Amelia. Hi. Now, if our listeners are anything like me, they might think sales and marketing are just two words which mean the same. Well, it sometimes seems like that. But I take quite an extreme view. I believe that sales involves getting people to buy things you've made, whereas marketing is about making things that people will buy. So, in your definition, marketing should really come before selling then, before you make anything? With new products, yes. But with existing products, companies need to use marketing after sales to maybe change an old product to make it sell better. And of course, with completely new products, you have a frame of reference issue. What does that mean? Well, for example, 
Henry Ford said that if you had asked people what they wanted before the invention of the motor car, they would probably have said faster horses. You see, people see improvements in terms of existing products, whereas true inspiration moves outside that framework. Completely new products are actually very hard to sell. Fascinating. OK, getting back to everyday problems. What should a company do if sales of an existing product start going down? They must find out why their customers are unhappy. So they need to analyse customer complaints? Except that sales have gone down because fewer people are becoming customers, so it's more important to look at competing products and find out in what way they're different. I suppose you can't reach people who didn't buy your product. Exactly. And the customers you still have are probably satisfied, so they're not a useful source. So then do you change your product to match your competitors? In fact, that's quite a dangerous approach. There was a company which sold tractors. Their sales dipped, so they started to make technical changes like engine power and the number of gears. But sales continued to go down. Finally, they contacted a few customers who they'd lost and asked them what they liked about the other company's tractors. Was it something stupid? The majority said the other tractors were better because they were orange, not grey. As I said. Not really. They liked orange because they could spot them in distant fields on dull days. The thing which makes one product better than another is often difficult for manufacturers to see. Companies must always think about the purpose of their products. Remember, farmers don't want tractors. Sorry? They want ploughed fields and planted crops, don't they? It's like most people don't want an electric drill. I want my electric drill. No, you don't. You want the holes your electric drill can make so that you can put up pictures on the wall, perhaps. Oh, I get it. Like people don't want a second-hand car... They want cheap personal transport to get to work or to the shops. Marketing's about selling benefits, not products. OK, so what's the most important thing for companies to remember when they're advertising their product? It sounds like it should always be about what it can do for customers. That is important, but marketing theory also teaches us that people don't want cheap products, but expensive products cheaply. So... Buy one, get one free is often used to promote sales. But in the end, none of this works if you don't reach potential customers. So go where your potential customers go and put your adverts there. A website, a social media platform, a television channel. Very interesting, Amelia. Thank you very much. This week, I'm talking to an expert in sales and marketing, Amelia Roberts. Welcome, Amelia. Hi. Now, if our listeners are anything like me, they might think sales and marketing are just two words which mean the same. Well, it sometimes seems like that. But I take quite an extreme view. I believe that sales involves getting people to buy things you've made, whereas marketing is about making things that people will buy. So, in your definition, marketing should really come before selling then, before you make anything? With new products, yes. But with existing products, companies need to use marketing after sales to maybe change an old product to make it sell better. And of course, with completely new products, you have a frame of reference issue. What does that mean? Well, for example, Henry Ford said that if you had asked people what they wanted before the invention of the motor car they would probably have said faster horses. You see, people see improvements in terms of existing products, whereas true inspiration moves outside that framework. Completely new products are actually very hard to sell. Fascinating. OK, getting back to everyday problems, what should a company do if sales of an existing product start going down? They must find out why their customers are unhappy. So they need to analyse customer complaints? Except that sales have gone down because fewer people are becoming customers, so it's more important to look at competing products and find out in what way they're different.
I suppose you can't reach people who didn't buy your product. Exactly. And the customers you still have are probably satisfied, so they're not a useful source. So then do you change your product to match your competitors? In fact, that's quite a dangerous approach. There was a company which sold tractors. Their sales dipped, so they started to make technical changes like engine power and the number of gears. But sales continued to go down. Finally, they contacted a few customers who they'd lost and asked them what they liked about the other company's tractors. Was it something stupid? The majority said the other tractors were better because they were orange, not grey. As I said. Not really. They liked orange because they could spot them in distant fields on dull days. The thing which makes one product better than another is often difficult for manufacturers to see. Companies must always think about the purpose of their products. Remember, farmers don't want tractors. Sorry? They want ploughed fields and planted crops, don't they? It's like most people don't want an electric drill. I want my electric drill. No, you don't. You want the holes your electric drill can make, so that you can put up pictures on the wall, perhaps. Oh, I get it. Like people don't want a second-hand car, they want cheap personal transport to get to work or to the shops. Marketing's about selling benefits, not products. OK, so what's the most important thing for companies to remember when they're advertising their product? It sounds like it should always be about what it can do for customers. That is important, but marketing theory also teaches us that people don't want cheap products, but expensive products cheaply. So buy one, get one free is often used to promote sales. But in the end, none of this works if you don't reach potential customers. So go where your potential customers go and put your adverts there a website, a social media platform, a television channel. Very interesting, Amelia. Thank you very much. That is the end of part four.